Well, the Biden White House sticking to its guns with top officials maintaining that we are not in a recession. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen today said the economy is in a transition period, not a recession. This despite two consecutive quarters of negative growth. Yellen explains that there are certain criteria that must be met before we can declare a recession and that we just haven't gotten to that point yet. She says the Treasury Department does not have the authority to declare that we are in a recession. So when you look at the economy, the, the official arbiter of what is a recession is going to be the National Bureau of Economic Research. They'll decide it sometime in the future. So I think what we can constructively do is talk about what is the state of the economy. As mentioned, GDP fell again in the second quarter after it fell in quarter one. Historically, economists have considered a second straight negative GDP reading as a strong indicator that we are in a recession. So what do experts have to say when it comes to the White House, according to some, appearing to have been moving the goalposts when it comes to the definition of a recession? Susan Shelley is the vice president of communications for the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. She joins us now with some insight. Hi, Susan. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Logan. Good to be with you. You just heard Janet Yellen there. President Biden also saying the U.S. is not in a recession despite two consecutive quarters of shrinking economy. Is he right? Is she right? What, what no. is the definition of a recession? It has always been two consecutive quarters of negative growth, which means shrinking. There is no growth when it's shrinking, so it's negative growth. And this is ridiculous. This is the best they can make it look. It reminds me seriously of going through the frozen food aisle and looking at the package of Swedish meatballs and remembering they had people work on that picture. That's the best they could make it look. <laughs> and that's what they're doing with these numbers. These right. are meatball numbers. They're meatball numbers. So why are they saying, why not just say, hey, we're in a recession. This is the definition and we're here. Well, what, do you, what, do you, what is their, their goal, do you think? Well, their goal is purely political. They want to continue to do more spending. They don't want to have to explain to anyone in Congress who's hesitant to vote for more spending that the economic numbers are terrible and they can't do anything right now to make them worse. They want to pretend it's okay. So they're saying we're transitioning to a good economy. Are we? <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, a new, that's a new metric. So I was reading the GDP was down about a percent from April to June. What does that tell us? Well, they were expecting it to be good. They were expecting it to be an increase. Economists had a consensus for about a half a percent of growth, and instead we got nearly 1% of shrinkage on an annualized basis. And that's just not good. And they can talk about unemployment being low, but you have to remember that people have left the workforce. So that only counts the people who are actively looking for work. It doesn't count the underemployed. It doesn't count the discouraged workers or the people who have left the workforce for whatever reason. So all those numbers are massaged. You can feel it when you go to the grocery store. You can feel it when you look at the consumer confidence numbers, which are down by about 35% nationally, year over year. People feeling not as confident about their ability to buy a house or a car or a major purchase. And that is also going to lead us further into a recession because consumer spending is a big part of the economy. Mm. I, I know the Fed has raised interest rates lately, uh, just lately, uh, three quarters of a percent. I noticed that the stock market was doing pretty well today. It did so yesterday, too. Can you just talk about the, the increase of interest rates and the price of gas and food and all these things, how it just all kind of works together and where you think the future going is going? Well, inflation is caused by too much money chasing too few goods. So what we had was a tremendous amount of government spending, pushing money into the economy and telling people to stay home and not work. Now, whether that was a good idea at any point, you can argue, but it created inflation. They, mm -hmm. they did more spending than they needed to. And now they're raising interest rates to try and dampen demand. And that is always how you end inflation. And it always is painful. It's a recession. People lose their jobs. And eventually, the amount of money and the amount of goods will, will come into equilibrium again, but it's never easy. Where do you think and we're going in the next six months? What, what happens by the end of the year? What do you think we are compared to where we are now? Well, I don't have a crystal ball, but no. I think if you, if you look at the possibility that the Republicans will take control of Congress and put brakes on some of these terrible policies, that will create more confidence, mm. more business confidence, more consumer confidence. Interesting. All right. Susan Shelley uh, with Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. Good to talk to you, Susan. We always appreciate it. Thanks. Great to be with you.